I literally get to my chair and I knew today was the day I was going to get fired. I just knew. I take my phone. I text Rachel, the girl who's been on the podcast before. And I say, Rachel, I'm getting fired today. And she's like, what are you talking about? Chemical What's up, guys? Welcome back to Chemical X. This is a very special episode because I'm pink. Oh my god, you're matching the whole set. I know, and I'm not saying I did it for Chemical X, but I knew that we would match with the colors. <laughs> um, so shout out to Chelsea at Blunt Salon for the beautiful hair. Go check her out on Instagram. And yeah, go visit her if you want some pink or any color, really. There's nothing like getting your hair done. I'm sorry. I I just think I'm probably a hairdresser's worst nightmare because I always come in and I say, let's throw some blue on. Let's throw some pink. <laughs> and they're like, those are not colors we we're work, used to. And we work so hard to get your blonde too. Like I'm there four hours, four or five hours to get my blonde because I have really dark hair. And then two months later, I stroll in. Yeah, I feel like going pink. And they're like, honestly, I really don't like you. Like, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry and I'm for sorry, that. but you can really tell if a hairdresser is good when it's time to put that pink on. Tell me you know what I mean, though. I mean, not everybody is able to because they're not used to putting mm. color like that. So they're there putting toners and you're leaving and they 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 patched the little mistake with the toner. But then when it actually comes down to it and you but, wash your hair. It's all downhill from there. Literally. <laughs> but I remember the first time I ever dyed my hair a vibrant color. I was like 13 and I wanted, um, actually I dyed it before that. But anyways, full head of color was red. I was 13 and I walked in and I was like, I want Ariel. Like you see the little mermaid. I want that on my head. <laughs> I feel and like you would like, suit that though. I honestly, I, I did suit I it. I think but you suit color in your hair more than normal Blonde. it's crazy <laughs> i think it's my skin tone that really matches with colors yeah it's crazy so i walked in and i was like i want to be basically the little mermaid and yeah. she was like and i and i said but i don't want to bleach my hair and she said ma'am that's not how it works <laughs> i said look do it as bright as you can without bleaching my hair she was like okay i'll just put like a really strong like uh volumizer volume that's what it's called right yeah, i don't yeah. know i don't remember anymore <laughs> um so she fucking dyed my hair red and it was all fun and games for about four days till I washed my hair twice and I started having fire orange hair. <laughs> like literally orange, like not even like the nice, like ready orange Gingery. color. It was, it was very scary. And I was like, well, and then I didn't go do it for another three months. So I was just fire orange hair and it wasn't cute. Oh my but, God. But yeah, no, that was the journey of my so, beginning of red hair. Yeah. So my friend who broke up with her boyfriend... She suddenly felt like, you know, after a breakup, what comes with a breakup? A massive change. Nothing it's says the haircut. Nothing says a breakup. If you see a girl who suddenly chopped her hair off, she changed her hair color or something, she's probably going through a breakup. At that point, you can slide in her DMs because she's single at this point. <laughs> it's a telltale. If she either chops her hair off or goes like from blonde to dark or from dark to blonde, yeah. breakup. And then if she dyes her hair red, like a dark red. She's going through a midlife a, crisis. It was a toxic relationship at that. It was a breakup, but they're still talking. They're still fucking. And it's super toxic. And she went red for that reason to show she has the power. Yes. It's, but she's only going to get rid of it when she cuts him out of her life. So what happens when you go baby pink? You're going through some th new changes in your baby life. Baby pink is like the, you didn't break up with anybody, but you're bored with your life, which yes. is very accurate. I can very. attest to that. <laughs> I am needing some spice in my life due to the fact that we are repeatedly doing the same thing every day. Um, so yeah, that's the, I, I feel like there's a, there's a fucking menu of things and it's funny because when I used to dye my hair, so if you guys don't know, I've been through like every color and this is not one of those moments where I'm going to say I'm going to put up a pic because I'm not. <laughs> so I've been through literally the rainbow and for every like color of hair. I feel so boring. <laughs> yeah. Like what you did blonde. <laughs> you didn't go through the phase with like an Avril Lavigne string. No. Avril oh, Lavigne. As a, Avril Lavigne. As a no. kid, my mom said, we don't need to go to the hairdresser. You want the two the blocks? On. <laughs> you want the two blonde blocks in the front? I'll do it for you. And let me tell you, that was the last time my mom 
apparently not cut my hair because she cut my hair last week your mom is still your hairdresser my mom is still my hairdresser i just don't let allow her with dye so i have this like fear of having short hair because when i was super young my mom would like go to the hairdresser and tell her behind my back cut 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 and i'd be like i don't understand why i'm still sitting at the chair i would literally have like I'd, i'd be crying because she always said my mom you have such a small face you suit short hair and i never liked short hair on me So as a kid, she just thought she could, I don't know, control Manipulate. me. <laughs> Nothing strange, guys. She still thinks she can. She like recommends me anyone to go see her, whatever. I never trust her. It's still like this like fear from being a child. And just the other week, she's like, oh, your ends are so dead. Let me cut them for you. And I was like, I need to get over my fears, you know, and face she, them straight on. Since COVID, she's cut my brother's hair, my dad, my dog. I figured she's got enough experience now. She's ready to take on. After she the did queen. the dog, you said, <laughs> she's ready to do the princess of the house. And I actually think she did a really good job. So yeah, it looks nice. When she started criticizing, like, uh, why isn't it uneven here? I said, okay, mom, calm down there. She's ready to say, send every hairdresser back to fucking Literally. school. It's funny you say that story because I had the exact opposite experience. So when I was younger, when I was like, maybe like eight years old, seven, even like starting at six, I was a huge tomboy. Like I loved dressing like a boy. I was always like that tomboy kid. Like, trust me, I wanted to dress in the boys section. So funny now that I have pink hair, but anyways, I wanted to be a boy. So every time we would go to the salon, I would beg my mom to cut my hair and I would literally be like, I want it short. Like I want it like a boy. Like, so I, you're basically doing what you didn't get to do in your childhood. <laughs> no, no. I wanted it like short. Like I wanted boy hair. Like and every ears? time. Yeah, f- shorter. I wanted literally like boy hair that I could spike up. And I would, <laughs> every time we would go, I would bring a picture and I would show her this is what I want. It would be like some actress with like super short hair, like a really like short hair, you know? Like almost like Peter You didn't even have hair. to find a girl. You just had to write man haircut. <laughs> Peter Pan, I had to. To write. So I I would show up with a picture and I would show up like, please, please, please. And the hairdresser would say, yeah. And then my mom would go and say, don't cut her hair like that. Don't cut her hair that short. Just tr- well, could we have in. switched moms? We literally we had the opposite experience. So my mom would go and snitch, tell the fucking hairdresser not to cut my hair that short. And every time I would leave crying because I still didn't have it short enough how I wanted it. Then one time I was allowed, somehow she... I thought you were going to say one time I took the scissors and I said, I'm doing this shit I'm on my own. On my own. <laughs> no, one time I was like, fuck this, I want short hair. So I guess my mom didn't interfere this time. And she let me have short hair. And guys, I essentially looked like Peter Pan. And I remember, <laughs> and I've said this story before, when I was in line at Kid Castor and the person behind me said, is that a boy or a girl? And then I said, no more short hair from here. <laughs> no more short hair from here on out <laughs> and to veronica now her hair length is considered long to what the short was if i could find a picture it was so ugly and i was like eight years old where you could literally if you have short hair you look like a boy at least a it happened at, at least it happened when you were young so it's like you know she's going through her stages you know it's uh, not like it's not like you're doing it when you're 25 years old don't forget i had green hair about four months ago so i'm still <laughs> going through the stage of bad decisions with my hair like. well cheers to green pink whatever the fuck hair cheers the color cheers guys, guys. We're drinking some amazing let me show you the bottle okay or i will mary nelly <laughs> rose wine from tuscany so you, pretty the bottle yeah it's so beautiful it was actually designed the girl who designed it i think she's like six years old she's uh the son oh, yeah she's the daughter of the where they did, did the wine the vineyard in italy so guys mary nelly brothers if you don't know they have a, a cafe and they also have a grocery store in the old port of montreal so if you guys are in the area They just released their new house recipe of wine and it's literally amazing. Like I'm not a rosé girl. I'm obsessed I mean, I match with the this. wine, but it's so good. I can't even explain to you how good this wine is. It's my favorite wine ever. So if you're looking for a new thing to try, go check them out. My Nelly Brothers. Cheers and enjoy our episode. Chug, chug, chug. So yeah, so I wanted to say with colored hair, I'm always able to like tell at what point in my life, like judging by the hair color I had. So... When I had, and I'm not talking about green hair this time, I'm talking about <laughs> green hair back when I was 15. We don't talk about that era. Like that era of green hair was like the lowest point in my life. And then I go, okay, blue hair. Like I was going through a rough patch, but I was still like, you know, pink hair is when my peak started happening. But I'll always remember when I did my, I was doing all my colors. And then I said, let me try turquoise. 
didn't come out turquoise came out green <laughs> and uh to make it worse i had done like streaks of green like i wanted it mixed in with brown okay what was i mint chocolate chip ice cream like what the <laughs> fuck that's anyway, like me changing my hair color it was that's like me putting mint over brown. exactly but mixed in anyways it was very ugly yeah. guys i tried to make it work but i was already ugly to begin with and then i started putting green yeah. in my hair. when i had done my hair green i was insecure about it but i was like let me make it work i curled it because that's what we all do when we don't like our hair we curl it so <laughs> so true i'm in my bed and my sister comes in and she goes i just want to let you know your hair is really ugly like you really don't look good and i was like what the fuck like how rude is that and then my mom came in and she was like yeah it's <laughs> really not nice and i remember crying for like two days and then being like fuck you guys you don't know anything about style and <laughs> and then i had to prove that i liked the green hair but i didn't <laughs> That's the worst. When everyone starts to tell you they don't like it, you feel like you have to convince yourself. But now it suddenly becomes about pride. It's yeah. about like, no, no, I like it. But then they made you feel like shit. And you're looking in the mirror like, how, you hate long, yourself. how long can I convince everybody else that I actually like this haircut until I can <laughs> hair color, haircut, whatever. But I think with me, my my thing is that I've tried black hair and I'm sorry to say, and if you have black hair, then you probably have a perfect face because... People who have black hair, there's so many, like, there's so many things you have to have if you have black hair. Like, you have to have perfect eyebrows, perfect eyes. Like, I can't explain it. It's only the most symmetrical faces, the perfect, like, my friend who has black Damn. hair, she suits it because it's, like, on me, I can't explain it. It, it just makes me look emo. But it you know depends it the is? skin complexion, everything. It's skin complexion so much and also, like, uh, you're, you're, like your features like how dark yeah. your features are because i have very very dark brown hair naturally like i don't know if you guys can see my roots it's very dark but i'm telling you maybe like two shades darker is black and just those two shades darker i know it does makes a not whole difference. look good on me like, i know it's in i mean already my own hair color doesn't look good on me but <laughs> if i go well, black you start having that line yeah. and yeah, like your boyfriend was like have you ever tried black hair today and i was like honestly like those bring me back to the days I, I couldn't even look at myself. I can look at myself with like super, super blonde hair. If I ever add blonde in my hair, it's got to be highlights. And if I want it to be super blonde, I just got to keep adding highlights. Mm. That's also a way to keep your hair healthy. If you just try and have blonde one day, you're, yeah. you're going nowhere. Yeah, you'll look Except like Except the hairdresser to chop it all off and have Veronica's Peter Pan Well, they haircut. can always go see your mom. She's offering uh, free cuts. <laughs> she also tells me on your dog. There you go, huh? I saved you 90 bucks. And low-key in that, I was waiting for her to say, give me half, 40 bucks. <laughs> I saved you 90, but pass me the 40. <laughs> but uh, yeah, my mom's not that skilled that she's going to start cutting my hair. No, thank you. But do you remember, I just quickly, before we move on, did you ever go through the phase where you had the razor and you would shave your bangs? Nope. What? No. Oh my God, that was back when I had my side sweet bangs. Wait, you use that to like what? To get the layers in? Mm-hmm. Like kind of smart them. though, because that's what they do. In not the bad. <laughs> they go... <laughs> Um, well, speaking of it, do you want to tell everybody that you shaved your face? Oh my god, I shaved my face, guys. <laughs> I inspired Veronica eight years later. Well, I had my boyfriend in the other room saying, it's gonna grow back bigger, it's gonna go back darker, and I'm there going... <laughs> like, I'm trying to say, no, babe, it's not, but I'm And nervous. there's a fine line of where to stop on the side there. I don't know if you got there, but well, I was like, a little more, a little more. Okay, wait, wait, hold on now. Do I stop here? Do I have to show that I have a little bit of a line on the sides? Where do I continue? It's very, yeah. And then when do you, and then it starts getting cut. And I just went, you know what? I'm going to put the razor down, but it's very <laughs> fun to do. I felt like I was at the barber, I know. You know. Did you go a little lower and did you start shaving? Like, did you start like exfoliating your face? No, I said, <laughs> you know what? We'll test out the perimeters and then we'll see. <laughs> But I wanted to say fucking apparently, so I had made a TikTok, guys, about how Gen Z is trying to cancel the crying laugh emoji. But apparently side parts, so let's see, I'm not saying you're out of fashion, but apparently side parts are not in anymore. Only middle parts. <laughs> so as you can see, I'm hip, I'm young, I'm cool. My nose is leaking. I'm hip, I'm young, I'm cool. And I have a middle part now because I'm trying to keep up with the times. So let me just educate you all. Hold on. I just want to let everybody know that I told Veronica she looked good with her hair in the middle. She goes, yeah, but I still like my hair on the side. So I don't know what the fuck she's acting all high fashion. Just yesterday, she was saying I like my hair on the side better. So shut the fuck up. Well, it's because I went to the hairdresser and my hairdresser said I like it in the middle. I said, okay, you know best. But uh, it took me telling her, her boyfriend and the hairdresser for her to finally say, 
The middle is it. <laughs> it's because you know what it is? My hair is so not used to being on the middle yeah, that so it's, it's always trying to move over. And I'm like, buddy, get back in place there. <laughs> yeah, I know that feeling. So I just want to educate everybody so that we don't all look old and fucking losers. What's not in? So first off, apparently it's no longer cool to use the crying laugh emoji. And now we use the skeleton face when something is so funny. Haha, <laughs> we're dead. Use the skeleton face. But <laughs> don't worry. I backed us all up on TikTok and I told them off and I said we're still using the crying laugh. So you're still cool <laughs> if you're using the crying laugh emoji. But side parts, not it anymore. Okay? Next one. Skinny jeans. So are you jeans. canceling me? I'm canceling you. Skinny jeans are also not in anymore. Thank God you changed. Just before the episode started, she was in skinny jeans. <laughs> no wonder I changed. I put my tights on. Are tights allowed? Is that skinny <laughs> jeans? <laughs> So how do you feel about that? Are you? I know recently you've not been a skinny jeans girl, but I don't well, it's know. This. I don't want to say that like I'm like ahead of fashion, but like I haven't been wearing skinny jeans. It's maybe like three years. But it's just because I. It's you know what's crazy? it depends your body type. And that's, that's why the what trends down fuck to. you up. Like yeah. if they try to start pulling in low rise jeans again, I will absolutely fight. Yeah. I will. I don't care where you live. I will fly there, fight you, come back <laughs> quarantine for two weeks just because I don't want to do low rise jeans. Like that doesn't work for me. Completely, okay. <laughs> like take away the skinny jeans. I'll be yeah. okay. But like, yeah, but the nineties low bell bottom. It's nice too. It honestly depends your butt. I'm not going in my everyday wearing it, but I just feel like it could be cool. It depends how you rock it. it. It really depends on the bodies. And that's why it's yeah. so, it makes me so mad when the trends start going against. Like I was, this whole time I've been living my best life, high rise jeans, side part, all the trends have been working in my favor. Yeah. And suddenly they're changing and I'm going back that shit up. Okay. <laughs> like, whoa. But I, I'm not so mad about the no skinny jeans, but asses look better in skinny jeans. Can we agree? Asses look better in skinny jeans? Yes, but if you have no ass, then I think if you have a pant that's a bit looser, it suits you more. And with pockets. Pockets really helps a girl with no ass. Why am I talking from experience? Pockets? <laughs> what jeans come pockets with no pockets? Pockets give you a boost in the back. A boost. I don't know if that's the boost term, but... <laughs> if you Wait. have no pockets, it's going to look like you have less of an ass. Whether you have an ass or not. Mm, I yes, have... trust me. But what jeans come with no pockets? What do you mean? There's so many pants that have no pockets. Okay, pants. Pants, Hold jeans, I anything. I didn't know that no pocket. I would say it would be the opposite. I'm not saying go get true religion jeans with the diamonds in the back. True to make you, religion. <laughs> to make it seem like you have a fucking honker in the back. And then just, an Ed Hardy cap to top it off. <sighs> and a Juicy Couture bag. And then the bangle bracelet. Don't talk too soon about Juicy Couture. It's coming I, back. <laughs> I love Juicy Couture, so I won't talk. Do you remember the bangle bracelets that everybody had and we would be like this? I remember. <laughs> I also remember the the uh, the bracelet my ex-boyfriend bought me that looked like an elastic. <laughs> Louis Vuitton. <laughs> it's right here, actually, guys, if you want to know. So Alessia's ex-boyfriend bought her a bracelet. He said, babe, I love you so much. Bought her a bracelet, and this is what it looked like. Louis Vuitton, but it looked like an elastic. So we would be taking pics, and you know, you want to be a helpful friend. And you say, Alessia, take off your elastic for the pic. <laughs> She'd be like, it's not an elastic. It's actually LV. <laughs> it was literally brown, but there's brown, el brown elastics that exist. And then there, the ending was just gold where it locked, but it was like, okay. Babe, where'd you get your elastics from? I love them. I swear to God, my friends made so much fun of it that I just can't anymore. One thing, I just have a question for you. What trends do you feel like that are in right now? Do you feel like need to go? Okay, the eyebrows that are brushed so up. No, not like the pretty... Tumblr, Pinterest eyebrows. I'm talking about the ones that are just that start going so this way. messy and they start looking like mm -hmm. pubes. <laughs> she said it. She, you heard it here first. Pubes. I, I kind of, I feel you. Like, I'm not a huge fan. Speaking of pubes, though, my boyfriend's like, Ella, you can uh, grow a little bit of hair on your vagina. I don't like it, like, bare anymore. And I'm just like... <laughs> The wine's getting to me, guys. You said, this is great. It's less work for me. More face shaving, less pube shaving. Exactly. <laughs> oh, my God. There's a He's like, are you going to grow up for me? I'm like, calm down there. <laughs> He's old fashioned, babe. He's an old soul. It's always the ones that are old soul. Don't worry, my boyfriend's who here. He's from the 50s. <laughs> um but like i get it it could be kinky like maybe once but then it's like what i have to wait three weeks for it to grow and then well, it, there's also a, a big difference between like 
I'm, I'm, there's a bush or like it's cute like you know what I, I know mean? but like he wants it to get to the stage but in between bush and cute mm-hmm. but then it's like I remember at a point I was like okay fine I'll grow it a little bit mm-hmm. for you and it was summer and I had to get in a bikini and I said babe I don't care what we ha- we'll what agreement we had it's just, I'm going in a bikini I don't give a fuck <laughs> so I shave it off and I see him the next time and he goes where did it go and I said babe it's summer ask me to do this in the winter and I'll have no problem I'll actually thank you well, I'm going to be honest. I Before I met my boyfriend, I was going to laser. I was getting a full bikini Brazilian laser and I was loving my life. Then I met my boyfriend. He said, you know, it would be cute if you grew it out of it. And I said, I just spent 800 on getting rid of this and now you're telling me, no, yeah, grow back. But Not you, that easy. You know Not what that though? Even easy. Kim Kardashian said in an article that she wished she never lasered it because now the older she gets, the more she wants a little bit of a... It always comes back but to you know Kim what? K and her trends. <laughs> Whatever Kim Kardashian is doing, that's the trends apparently. Literally. She also got rid of half her ass. So if everybody was wondering why her ass isn't as big, it's because she reduced it. So big asses aren't any in anymore, so we can cancel Veronica. We are now going yeah. with small asses. I'm going to have a talk with uh, Kim K here soon. <laughs> Why do I also act like I have like literally no ass? Yeah, I have an ass, but like have... when I'm next to Veronica, I, I suddenly feel like... But you know what it is, though? You have a perfect size. Like, if you would see you from the back, you would say, wow, that girl has a nice ass. But then as soon as she turns around, you go, those are some titties! <laughs> like, no. There's always a... No, because from the front, if you look at my like waist down, I'll look bored like Like, you no, wouldn't you think I have any what of an ass. No. Yes. You don't look bored like at all. You're you're lean, like your body, like you're more tall, skinny, lean, but you don't look like you don't have an ass. I can't explain it. Nobody ever if looks you, at a skinny girl and says, I can't wait to see what her ass looks like from the side. Like you just picture it as like, okay, it can never if, be huge. If you when you see a girl with you with curves, you go, holy shit, tell her to turn around. Tell me you know what I mean though. I, I know what you mean, <laughs> but also I think that if you had like A cups, people would be like, Wow, she has a nice ass. Your tits steal the show. Whereas if I had eight cups on my ass, they would say she still has small tits. So you know what I mean? It's But you know, the reason I don't think I have an ass is when I start to get on my period or let's be real or I start eating a poutine and I literally let my stomach just be okay, like a regular size. And suddenly my ass starts looking inverted. Like I start to look at the size of my stomach from the front and I go, it's bigger than my ass. So I'm like, what's going on here? I'm, I probably have a bored ass. But it, I always think about like, do you ever see like pregnant women? Like when they like, they have a belly, but then their ass is starting to look like, it's yes, very, that's like, what I mean. You're an ass. I can literally look six months if I let my stomach just breathe. Cause I love ass cookies and I like the shape of the body. But, uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah. I really hope that uh, asses don't go out of style. Like I'm going to be really pissed. I'll be real. I'm gonna have to have a talk. I'll tell you, even if it goes out of style, your boyfriend will still love you and still be okay with it. <laughs> There's one trend that I feel like is gonna get out, and I don't want people to hate on me, but like small glasses. Do you know what I'm talking about? What do you about? mean? Those are so pretty. Oh, like yeah, vintage small, small glasses. I'm I think they're the- gonna go out of style. Sorry. Already they've started to go out of style. Like the little, like, you know what I'm talking about. You know, like two summers ago, I don't it was think really so. into I always like those. So okay. anyways, I'm getting insulted here because half my glasses are small, so well, I'm not talking about regular. I'm, I think it also depends your face, though. I have such a small I'm face. I'm talking where it's about like, even if I wanted to do the Gucci big, it's like, what's this bug doing here? I'm not talking about like regular size. I have glasses that are like regular size small. I'm talking about the little ones that you wear here and they're very like, that's not in anymore. It's already like you look and you're, you're still looking with your vision. You're not yeah, looking at Yeah, like glasses. they're like literally here, the little ones. Like that was a trend for like two summers and I already know that it's going to leave. And I'm very happy about it because I don't suit small glasses. So <laughs> I'm glad we were both able yeah. to let everybody know what styles we want to be at a trend. But anything else on TikTok since we're here? <laughs> My brother. So guys. I've been now I've been like actively working trying to get it on TikTok, okay? And every once in a while I get a, a, a video that does pretty well, you know, does pretty well. I get a bunch of followers from it and I'm I'm happy about it and it's a work in progress. My brother, who's 16, posts one video. She had to let everybody know 16. Yeah, younger than me, okay? Has some respect for your elders. <laughs> posts one video, gets two million views and twelve K followers. No. I'm that's... going, I'm sorry, I had a video that got two million views. But why am I at 3,000 followers? <laughs> and, and you I have busted tits. ass. And I'm going, what the fuck? Like, I gotta have a talk with this TikTok little shit. TikTok is rigged. I'm sorry. TikTok is rigged. So that's what I'm saying. The TikTok, oops, 
my TikTok has decided that the only videos that do well are not the ones that I look good in. They're the ones that I'm complaining and I have no makeup on. Yeah, because everyone so, likes to talk shit about somebody who's crazy. ugly. Well, Nobody time, has anything nice to say about somebody who looks hot. <laughs> every time I post a thirst trap, TikTok doesn't want to know nothing about it. So as usual, I keep posting me ranting. And if you haven't seen, I posted a rant about the traffic reporters on the radio. So I'm sure if you're from Montreal or pretty much anywhere, I'm sure it's the same. They start pulling out all these abbreviations, all these names that I don't even know where the fuck that do is. A little, do a little skit for us. Do it. Guys, and it's looking a bit sluggish at the end of the carry up and down and on the ill to the ill or true bridge. Uh, yeah, it's looking slow there. And if you're going past the... Um, uh, I don't know what you're saying. I don't know where that is. Where's Cavendish? Kind of sounds like us on the podcast, though. <laughs> Literally, if they want to hire. So anyways, guys, I posted a whole rant about how I don't understand what they're saying. And everybody's agreeing with me, agreeing, ha ha ha, hilarious. And then you always have to get those few, ha ha, so stupid if you don't know. I'm going, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, please, they're they're abbreviating the 40 to be with the lovers, to be the TK. haters. Yeah, so I don't do well with haters. Anyway, so moral of the story is I posted this TikTok, went pretty well. People are hating on me. People are agreeing, whatever. And then I get Donna Saker. Guys, if you're from Montreal, I'm sure you've, you're familiar with this name. If not, I'm sure you'll hear her voice. She's the host of a very popular radio station in Montreal. 92.5. The beat, 92.5. And that is absolutely my audition. Donna Saker, if you're listening, I know I insulted the people that work there, but, you know, I'm for hire. She's for hire and also she's done a seven-year-old boy. So if ever you need anything to do with that, she's also available. I have voices. I have extra voices, okay? So she comments on the TikTok and says, lol, well, I guess I'll let the traffic reporters at my radio station know. And I said, oh, Haha, heart, just kidding. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry I insulted you, but also hire me. Like, oh my God. Well, I hope when I send in my application to be a host, they don't say, yeah, I remember this girl. She fucking made fun of us all. And they go, Psh, shred it. <laughs> I ruined my chances, guys. I don't know if you guys know, but I've always wanted to be a radio host. That's why I started a podcast, because I couldn't get on the radio. And uh, yeah, I basically fucked up my chances of 92.5. So 94.7, if you're listening, hits I think FM. it's 94.7. 94.7. 94.7 <laughs> hits FM. Not the, that is not the tune. They don't sing it. Anyways, moving on. I feel like there's been a couple of episodes where I was like, maybe I'll say the story, maybe I'm not. But I don't know if anybody's ever been at the... As it, <laughs> you're holding that wine so gripped i know and it's been at the same place this whole entire time i'm gonna put it down i'm chugging this this is my breakfast actually no i look cool with it in my head i look cool with it. every Big girl bitch. at the restaurant literally babe let's take a snap <laughs> this wine is so good mm. oh my god hi waiter can i have another one of the marinelli please <laughs> Yeah, no, the rosé. The aged one, yeah, thank you. Yeah, the one made from Tuscany, right? Oh, that yeah. one's 18 and the other one's 14? Yeah, I'll go I love with the 14-year-old. I love the nutty notes of it, yeah. <laughs> I love the people that do... If I would go on a date, not oh, that I'm ever going to go on a date. So the real way to actually test wine is to shake it, put it in your mouth... You're already holding it wrong. Use. I know, I'm not holding it right, but um, I just started liking wine, sue me. Um, <laughs> but the real way is to like stir it around, put it in your mouth... You have to swish Mouth, it do around. like mouthwash, yeah, and then spit it out in a bucket. Yeah, that's the real way to drink wine and test it. At my old job, we used to have a wine o'clock on Fridays, four p.m. Okay, and then we started having like a wine taste, uh, wine specialist come, and we would do a wine tasting, which super fun yeah but when we're getting there and he has his cup that he's spitting the wine back in we're all going what and he's going first of all you're holding that super wrong you're heating and if you would go in a restaurant people would see you they would know you don't know wines so now i try to hold it like this but why am i going this is how you have to hold it you have to hold it so basically you have to hold it from the bottom because if you hold it here you're heating up the wine and you don't want to heat up the wine with your body heat because we're, okay. so, we're so fucking hot is what he's trying to say so you have to hold it. Listen, I just started liking wine and so Depp wine little... still tastes the same as expensive wine. Like, I don't even know the difference. With this one, I do because my boyfriend is really into like natural wines and all that stuff. So I know a good wine. But there's always still that Depp wine to me, that Gallo wine. Shout out to Gallo over there. That is sweet for me. You like a good Moscato. I, I like a... a good super sweet wine because I also don't really I'm like fine. wine. So it's like I'm like faking it You're and faking it's, it, it. the sweeter it juice. is. 
Essentially, you want essentially juice. you want spiked juice. Yeah, I know the difference between red, white, and rosé, and that's as okay. far as my connoisseur goes. <laughs> but every time I go to the restaurant and I order a wine and I like, it, I say, "What's the name of that wine?" Let me write it down for future reference and write it down. Take a picture. You never go back. You never go it. back. Listen. Realistically, you never look yeah. again. <laughs> Since we're drinking wine, Cheers. I thought it's a great time as we're getting drunk to let everybody know how I got fired from my oh. job. <laughs> I just want to say getting fired is like insulting. It's like breaking up. But it's like breaking up. It's it's breaking up, but it's worse because usually breakups, there's always some kind of like, look, we try, we worked on. Getting fired is like we literally, you weren't good. Like we didn't like you. Yeah, you, you good were enough. not like, good. You there. It's below to your self esteem more so. Absolutely. Than a breakup. More so. I have to say more so than Absolutely. a breakup. Absolutely. So if anybody's listening today and has gotten fired before. Cheers to you. Cheers to you and cheers to me. <laughs> so this was a while ago. It was the job I was working on before. I it, like the clickbait though. I got fired. <laughs> Three years ago. <laughs> so if anybody remembers our episode before with uh, Sugar Baby, Rachel. Um, she's going to go, why are you calling me a sugar baby? I'm not a sugar baby. <laughs> If anybody remembers Rachel from our previous episode where she spoke about sugar babies, well, she was basically um, who I was working with at my old job. Um, it was an actor for a company. If you guys followed me on Instagram and you're a true OG, then you know exactly where I'm talking about. Um, so I, we hated our jobs. I'm not going to lie here and say I did. You don't have to because you got fired. Exactly. You, there's no loyalty. Well, Veronica, if I'm being correct, they were letting me go. <laughs> I mean, were you laid off or were you fired? Because you're not I was, safe. I was laid off because the job was no longer in position. So now you're clickbaiting as fuck because you didn't get fired. You're not Veronica, allowed to relate to the fire. Veronica, people. how many people let you go and it say we're abolishing your position? But it's really the fact that they no longer want you there. So I was over this job. I wasn't doing everything in my power to keep this job. I actually, at this point, my goal was to get fired, fired. laid off. So that I can collect unemployment and figure out what I want to do with the rest of my life. So but then when I also Canada heard that you can't collect and also travel, I said, what am I going to do? I don't rot. <laughs> so I stuck it out like anyone would. I was, I got a bunch of warnings. I was showing up late to work. Clearly you didn't care about your job. I didn't anymore. care about my job. I was trying to get. You wouldn't be mad if you I wouldn't fired. be get, I wouldn't be mad. But no. you would make a podcast. I would get it. mad if I couldn't collect unemployment and then I was still fired. <laughs> Um, so what had happened was my boss had went on a trip and I think the deep root issue of why I hated my job so much is that if I do not like the product that I'm trying to sell and do the social media and all that, then why am I there for, if I can't convince myself to want to buy the product, what, how am I going to convince everybody else to buy it? So I think that was like the deep rooted issue and the quality of the product was so bad that like so many people were returning it and and it was just like we were calling ourselves experts in domains that we weren't actually experts mm -hmm. in and then you would see like a company who just got into that and were killing it off the bat and I was just like there's no hope for us and then when we had got so my my boss was away and we had got samples of what it was that we were going to be selling in our new collection and everybody was saying this new collection was going to be the collection that took us off the map that changed that, that made us different what they always say they it's always, always say that wait till you see the new collection it's that, it's that boost of like it'll change and we will I'm change wasted. <laughs> So, yeah, so basically we had received the production and they opened it and I was the most like, I guess, fit model there. So they said, Alessia, do you mind? You're the in-house model. Can we just put it on you? So the second I put it on and realized this is fucking terrible, I was like, what am I doing here? So I started expressively speaking about how I felt. I was like, I cannot stand this. I I'm like, the quality is just bad. The patterns are bad. We're not up to date. Like at that point in time, it was very like to have the bright orange and to have the matching sets. And we were still doing designs that were back from like mm -hmm. TJ Maxx styles of like 2020, 2015. You know what I mean? Yeah. So we were so behind that it was really like we were ha hanging on by a thread. So when I, I, when I got, when we got the product and I put it on, I was so discouraged. I was like, look guys, like this is really like, it's not, it's, it's just not good. So I openly started speaking about how I, I just, I can't stand the product. Now the design team is obviously getting in some way insulted. <laughs> Everybody should have a say in the design because we didn't feel the design team was doing it adequately. The, the, exactly. So we had all spent extra time 
to basically send them inspos of what we thought was nice so that like when you see after you put in so much work of like what you think would be good and like what everybody else was kind of agreeing and then the design team does something completely different you're just like i'm over it like i tried like it's it's done mm -hmm. so i i basically was saying i this is terrible like at this point i just want them to leave me off like this is like the quality is not getting any better and yeah maybe i was a little bit of a bitch but like it was the the reality of it and everybody else agreed with me but obviously alessia the girl who has a podcast is the only one who Spoke says out. it how it is <laughs> and when i got back when they got back from i low-key knew when i did this that maybe that somebody would go inside the office and let them know that i said this to the boss and maybe the boss would be like it's time to let her go mm -hmm. so that's exactly <laughs> what happened <laughs> so my boss gets back you know when you just know you're gonna get fired i had to go ask my boss for something so the door was open i just knocked and she was really weird with me and i'm very like when somebody's weird with me like i'm not just gonna not say anything so i was like you're being awfully weird today like is everything okay like let's just pretend her name was like Katrina because she wasn't like the high high boss but she was my boss she yeah. took care of my division so I still felt very like one-on-one -on -one comfortable to say that and she was just like oh I'm overwhelmed and I left I literally get to my chair and I knew today was the day I was gonna get fired I just knew I take my phone I text Rachel the girl who's been on the podcast before and I say Rachel I'm getting fired today and she's like what are you talking about I swear to god it was like a movie I look up I look up and my boss, who I had spoken to like literally five minutes ago, she goes, can I speak to you in my office? A big shout out to Neonific. If you guys are looking for a neon sign to put anywhere in your house, club when they reopen, anywhere to create that vibe, then um, check out Neonific and use discount code chemicalx at checkout for 10% off. Today, Veronica decided to wear a neon sign on her hair. So she's matching the sign. The discount doesn't apply to this though. Sorry. Full price only. At that point you said, I know I called it, but I'm still pissed. Veronica, like getting called to the office. I don't care if you wanted to get fired or whatever. Like that's a scary situation. Yeah. And I get there and there's the both bosses sitting. So one's on a chair with the paper and the other one is waiting for me. She came to get me. And I go sit down and she goes, look, like, she didn't mention anything of, like, girls gossiping in the team and saying mm. whatever. They said you're unhappy or whatever. They just said, you know, um, we are abolishing your position. And I swear to God, when they were telling me all this, I was like, I can't explain the feeling of, like, yes, wanting to get fired. But also, in so many ways, you wanting to do it. Because you're like, yeah. fuck you, fuck this company. Yeah, and also, like like I'm saying, getting fired is, like, getting broken up with. So it's like, if you don't get the chance to do it first when you're unhappy in the relationship, like... Exactly, but fuck? when there's money at stake, let me tell you, break up with me every day. But it still hurt. It hurt because mm -hmm. I was there for three years. So, um, yeah, they were basically, like, we're abolishing your position and, 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 and all this stuff and and then i was like oh okay uh, whatever i'm like the first thing i said was am i able to collect unemployment and they were like yes 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 i was like oh, okay off i go <laughs> thank you so much for the experience it's been great working here um anyways and that day oh my god i forgot to mention i always have my car at in the past didn't have the money for the car i have now so i had why well, am i acting like i have a ferrari now yeah anyways <laughs> i had not have the money for the car i have now Hello, what are you driving right now huh <laughs> a turbo c681 oh <laughs> So I was driving a Mitsubishi Lancer. I can never say it. Mitsubishi Lancer. Mitsubishi. So I was driving a Mitsubishi Lancer. So at that time, it was in the garage shop. So Rachel had actually slept at my house the night before. So she can drive me to work. And then she would drive me to the garage after work. We start at the same time. Very fun. We're good mm -hmm. friends now. So she sleeps over and we get to work flying early on the day i get fired i'm always late the one day i'm getting fired veronica i come 20 minutes earlier hey kathy <laughs> it just makes it that much harder and then so they fire me and they go okay well um we're gonna th this company never did things the proper way never everything was always sketch mm -hmm. now all of a sudden when they let me go they're super professional they walk me out they let me grab my stuff i'm grabbing my notepad they're like is that your notebook okay calm the fuck down is that your pen how cheap are you going to be right now 
<laughs> they always do that though. When it comes down to it, they start going, "Well, is that the company pen or is that?" And I was like, "Bitch, they're literally watching something. me pack on my shit." I kind of like it was insulting to me. I was like, "What do you think I want yeah. to steal from you? There's nothing that I want in here. I'm not stealing your design prints. <laughs> I've been talking shit about it for four months. <laughs> like, I want to leave with a doggy bag." And then, so guys, just keep in mind, I write, I had written to Rachel saying. I think I'm getting fired. And then I went in the room. And when I finished, they said, don't worry, you're not the only one being let go today. That makes <laughs> that me feel me, that. Yeah. That, makes, that made me feel a little bit better. But guys, I just want you to know that our office is open. So when she's guiding me to pick up all my stuff, everybody's staring at me. Not that the office was like 200 people. This is like getting arrested. This is like getting arrested. Like, so basically <laughs> everybody basically around me did this. Everybody around me is watching me. So everybody knows what's up. So it was very awkward. Anyways, so Rachel, before I went into my meeting, saw that I was getting fired. <laughs> so when I got out, she was watching me. It's not like I could have texted anyone. So that's how they did it so that I wouldn't be able to let my mm. friends in there know that I, I was, I got fired. Just got fired, guys. Exactly. But Rachel had got the text because I felt it before. Yeah. So I sent it. So then when they go to her office, the, sec- the second I leave, first of all, I don't have my car. So they go, I go, well, I don't have a car to leave. I always have my car the one time i'm like i don't have a car um we'll give you 40 dollars to cab home i'm like i live in laval i live in laval a 60 will do she gives me a, another 20 i go 60 should be five <laughs> <laughs> and then you download the uber app and you get 30 percent off your first ride what am i sponsoring uber <laughs> <laughs> so that's what happened and then i get out and realistically what i should have done is just waited on the outside but i got fired i don't want to stay on the premises i should have waited till rachel was the next one getting fired we would have left happily together (laughs) but i took the uber which that should have been the day that i started saving because i was no longer getting paychecks (laughs) should have saved that 60 bucks you should have took that bonus so i fucking took a taxi and then they get they go and grab rachel and as soon as they said rachel can we speak to you in the office she already knew what was up because i had gave her the warning so she got out of the meeting and she she was like she was very like i was in shock because i was the first one but since she kind of knew she had time to like think about it when she went in and they were like yeah we're letting you go because she goes oh yeah no 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 for sure because i know that the company is not doing well you know like she really like (laughs) every time they were shooting it in her face which is brilliant oh no i totally understand like you guys don't have the money because it's not doing you can't well afford me. you can't afford me and like you know all the all the ideas that i gave you guys like you didn't take any so understandably so like that's absolutely the reason that Why you're not doing well. you are letting me go so basically i call after i leave there i call my boyfriend and i'm crying because it's like it's still a shock as happy as i am yeah. i was like they let me go babe today is the day and i felt useless having no job i can't explain it to you is such a feeling where it's like what am i doing with my life what's happening next especially when it, you're getting fired because or let go whatever because <laughs> i'm you're- gonna drink to that <laughs> <laughs> it's bringing me right back <laughs> especially when you don't have time to plan like when you quit you know you have you know already two weeks before you quit that you're quitting you know th- you know four months before you're quitting yeah. that you're quitting but like you're you, literally you using the, the work computer to go on indie jobs. <laughs> you're you're on LinkedIn on the work desktop. But <laughs> incognito mode. <laughs> <laughs> but like when you're fired, it's like one day to the next, you have to start planning right away. Yeah. It's kind of scary. And like obviously I don't want to be on uh unemployment like forever. Yeah. So, so anyways, I, it was just a major shock and everything ended up happening the way it wait, was supposed Rachel to. Rachel got fired. Okay, so Rachel gets fired. And then she calls me after she goes, they just let me to, they just let go of me too. And they said, I'm not the only one. So now I'm like, weird that they tell her that after they're not actually letting go of anybody else. But I guess it was to say me. Yeah. But like, anyway, so me, I'm now I'm like, who else is next? Like, is it my other girl that I worked with, Christina? Mm-hmm. Like, who is it? But it was basically just me and Rachel. <laughs> it's like companies always say we want you to get along we want you to work together and then the second you become mm. friends with somebody in an office all of a sudden it's like it's negative it's but you so know what it weird 100 percent because they would have known that they can't let you go and then keep rachel because they know rachel's gonna start having your back and being like what the fuck you know what i mean yeah so- but i also think they just wanted to get rid of both of us <laughs> there was no it was equal, two birds equal. one stone yeah 
<laughs> at that point they should have just shafted you guys both in i the just office. think of like the stories of like rachel would just not show up to work for a week and just give an excuse and it would just fly because it's like we had so much anxiety you know that feeling when you have so much anxiety about going to work and the more you prolong it and the more you say i'm sick i'm sick i'm sick you know on one day one monday you're gonna have to face going back in mm-hmm. so it's like Rachel did that for so long and I was like, you go, I, I, I honestly like, I want to learn from you. She would come in with these stories like my house is flooded, water's everywhere to the point where she You're didn't have a chance to tell me the story on break and say, it was a lie. I would be like, Rachel, is everything okay? She goes, Alas, sweetheart. What do you mean? I was acting. I'm like, wow. Like, I really need to This really courses. sets the tone for that episode. So, guys, if you haven't seen the <laughs> one where we had Rachel on, go and listen to now. You'll look at it with new eyes because now you know her character. I can't explain, though. Like, my biggest fear is getting fired. Like, I'm so... I know. When it comes to jobs, like, I'm terrified of even calling in sick. Like, when I call in sick and I actually don't feel well, I'm I'm scared to call in sick because I'm like, they're going to think I'm percent. lying. Like, I, I can't explain it. I'm so nervous when it comes to calling in sick, taking vacations and stuff. And But I'm, I'm also that person. Wait, so I have six sick days a week? Okay, let me use them wisely. Six, six let days a week. Let me always use them six. on the Mondays and Fridays to prolong my weekends. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, I'm a really pussy when it comes to that. And and I know already that if I would get ever get fired, which knock on wood hasn't happened yet, but I would never recover from it. Um, but I want to say it's funny how when things happen... You always somehow kind of know about it. Like the way yeah. you knew that you were going to get fired. It's a gut feeling. It's a gut feeling. Yeah. And people can say what they want about energy and... No, universe, you feel it. You Sorry. can feel things. So I have a story and it's funny how things always happen this way. So I remember when my first boyfriend ever, my longest relationship, actually, babe, if we want to beat the record, <laughs> was this guy. So... Um, how long was it? Two years. Wow. I think. Yeah. Is this the one with the really good nose? Yes. Wow. Sweetheart, I have absolutely, if you're listening, which you aren't, I have nothing to say about you. Absolute sweetheart. I hope you're happy. We have never spoken again after the breakup. But, however, I just want to say this Do you think that our boyfriends could say the same thing? (laughs) (laughs) So, basically, this kid adorable whatever amazing relationship we had but at the end of it i was just like okay i'm well how amazing could it have been (laughs) i mean for me it it wasn't it had really not to be cliche but it had nothing to do with him it was really like i'm not in love with you anymore this is when i started becoming friends with you when i was when me and someone else were helping you with how to break up with him this is how we became friends it's because like i'm saying this is iconic let's take a cheers (laughs) cheers We basically met and we were therapists. So as I can't call in sick, I also can't break up with people. I'm very (laughs) like, I don't want to disappoint anyone. That's my, there's probably a word for it somewhere. It probably comes from some childhood trauma, but I'm really scared of disappointing people. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Like I would rather be broken up with than break up with you. That's always been Oh my God, I totally disagree with that. (laughs) Oh, I'm totally like, I'd rather break up up with with somebody. No, break up with me. Getting broken up with is like... Your heart crushed. Yes, but also break up with me. I can't stand hurting people. So my, this guy, I'm going to say it again, sweetheart. And I was just Let's like. Let's just call him Cherry because he had such a perfect nose. Cherry is cherry the perfect, perfect name Cherry. For so Cherry, amazing relationship. At the end of it, I just wasn't in love anymore. And I, it was to the point where I was like, I wanted it so bad. So I don't know if anybody can relate, like not to get relationshipy, but I, I wanted it so bad to work because I was like, this is like an amazing guy. He's mm-hmm. perfect. Like we, an amazing guy doesn't mean he's treats perfect me for you. so well. Exactly. Treats me so well. And I was at this point, not ed- like not experienced in relationships. And I just felt like maybe if I just kept going, maybe I'll fall in love with him again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Not like, yes, yes, I, yes. I just, I was always waiting for the love to grow stronger and it never went to the point where I felt that it should have. I just knew that. I just didn't feel like this was, you know what I mean? Like there was just a certain part. Yeah. There was just a certain part where I was like, I'm, I'm not unhappy. Like I wasn't unhappy, but I was just used. Like there was missing that oomph. There was missing the oomph, you know? So honestly, guys, if you're, if I can just be serious for a second and give a piece of advice, it was really hard for me to learn all these things about myself because I'm a person that I don't want to disappoint people. So very often I choose to keep things going because I don't want to hurt anybody. And Do you really, have a message to send a David over here? 
<laughs> yeah, babe. Uh, but really, the right thing to do is if you're not feeling something, like, just end it. Because it's more respectful the, for the other person. And later on, I realized that in life when I had it the other way around. Um, so, yeah, I just want to say, like, if you're not feeling something, like, the person will be okay. So, don't put so much other people's feelings before your own because you're going to end up being unhappy and even hurting them oh, more. Oh, so if I could just step in here. I know the person will be okay, but what if the person does better than me after and then I regret my decision? I feel like a lot of times people don't break up with people because they're so worried or they're already thinking like, wow, what if that person after I break up with them ends up finding somebody better than me? Do you know what I mean? Like you always want to leave a relationship and be like, I was the best he ever had right but what happens when the guy who le- you leave for ends up finding somebody else and then you're suddenly still single and i feel like that's a lot of reasons why people hold stay off. together uh yes personally yes but also i don't want to be like but everybody i've ever dated except one person has not had a girlfriend after me so i don't know if i'm <laughs> fucked up or okay. i'm just the best available <laughs> best no, but, available but i mean i don't see it that way so for me i i know it sounds weird but i would honestly wa- rather they like leave me and then go be with somebody that just so that i know like yeah i, I didn't hurt them like i'm very uh yeah. the way that i think is very with other people's feelings which like well, I'm you're saying, such a good be, person not necessarily though because because I actually, thinking I'm doing something good, I decide to stay with somebody when in reality I'm hurting them. Because you never, think about yourself. You don't want to be in a situation where somebody's staying with you out of pity, which you have to think of it that way because that's what you're kind of doing. So anyways, if I could give one piece of advice about this podcast is don't dye your hair green. And also if you're (laughs) over a relationship, just speak to them and break up with them. It'll hurt in the moment, but you'll be better off than dragging it Okay, on. so wait. When so, you, when you broke story. up with him, were you like, Cherie, I need to talk to you. So my story, so about this breakup, it was my first time ever like breaking up with somebody. First breakup, first serious relationship. Very scary, to And be I was honest. in on this. Oh my yeah. God. So uh, what happened was he came over to my house and I was like, just pass by, whatever. He shows up, guys. And this is where my, my thing came in of people just know things. He shows up with a red rose for me oh never in my, my life did he show up with fl- I, he came gave me flowers on like valentine's day and stuff but never did he just randomly show up with flowers <laughs> the one day that i'm planning this breakup <laughs> and i'm gonna do it and, this, and you commit you know you really commit and <laughs> and you he, told all your friends about it i told my friends so i have to do you it. have to do it you today's to the day it. Shows up with a red rose. I went, no, oh my like, God. oh my. And I wanted to, you know, when you're breaking up, you don't want to ever give the, you don't want to give them hope. So from the beginning of that chillage, you want them to know something's off. When he opens the door to a red rose, what do you oh want me to do? Oh my God. I said, oh wow, thank you, babe. And it was so awkward. And oh then, my, and you chilled. still did it on that day? So we chilled. We chilled for a bit. And I was just like, why don't we go for a drive? I like, can't I want to talk. Yeah. I'm traumatized by it. So I was like, for me, that moment when I opened the door to him with a rose, my heart shattered. Yeah. Because I'm like, this, like, he obviously senses that I'm not happy anymore. And he's trying to make me happy. Yeah. And it just, it hurt me so much. Like, yeah. I'm sure for him, he probably feels like, oh, I'm such an idiot. But I was just like, wow, I, I, I'm a monster, you know? But, it is what it is, guys. In the end, I had his best interest in mind by doing this. And he so. realized you're not a monster. You're Dora yeah. the Explorer. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so yeah. So I was like, look, let's go for a drive. I was being wow. weird. We need a talk or let's go for a drive. Yeah. Nothing says a breakup like those two sentences. <laughs> so we're going for a drive. And I just had to basically explain. And this is was, was the hardest part for me, was explaining why we were breaking up. Because... There was no, like, no, like, you did this or uh, I can't deal with it. Like, it was literally, we had an amazing relationship. I just wasn't in love anymore. I I was missing that love. And it's so hard to communicate that to somebody, though. But to say, babe, I love you, but I'm not in love with you is painful, to say the least. Like, anyway, so that's what happened. And I just, it's funny how people just have an intuition. So I'm not saying follow your intuition, but... If you think he's cheated on you, he probably is. Oh, he was not cheating <laughs> no, on I'm you. No, I'm saying intuition-wise. Like, always trust your gut, yeah. guys. Girls and guys especially, I guess, you just sense something. You can sense when something's off in work, in a relationship or something, and yeah. it's crazy. How- and you left you left that relationship and you said, I'm not going to have my boyfriend, Cherry with the perfect cherry nose. So I'm going to go get a nose job after him and change my whole life. <laughs> Essentially. Literally. 
guys, he had the perfect nose and I didn't at the time. And then you said, that's the only thing that I'm missing in this I almost went to the doctor and showed a picture of him and said, this is my ex me his nose. <laughs> um, no, he was cute. Yeah, he was a sweetheart. I have nothing bad to say about him. And I hope he's watching this. I hope he's doing well. Okay, question. Do you think ex, ex-girlfriends or ex-boyfriends could be friends after like time? I mean, I'm going to give this response and it's very to myself. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like maybe yeah, people yeah. could have a different experience. But personally, I've been in a lot of relationships. But okay. <laughs> I'm the type of person where I'm friends with everybody. I'm very friendly. But that being There's a said, line. That being said, there is really none of my exes that I'm like friends with. Like we're on good terms. Yeah. That, that's one thing. Being on good terms, talking I on totally a party, agree with uh, that. sending a text, hey, here and there. Like just to, if there's something you need or whatever, that's, I have nothing wrong with that. Okay, but see, no. To be friends, like to be like, hey, how are you? Uh, you know, talking once a month or still being in the life. Like I yeah, just, in a relationship- and I and don't get me wrong, I'm sure people have had different experiences, but I haven't had a relationship where I felt like I still needed something from that person because yeah. we've always spoken about friendships, relationships. You're you're there to gain something, no mm-hmm. matter what. You're gaining something from another person. Yeah, like Veronica, like I don't do. I want to be friends with her. No, <laughs> is this podcast colleagues? eventually gonna make us money? And we're we're you know we're making it work <laughs> probably. <laughs> but really, down to the like. If you think about it, that's every, really good advice. Every relationship, every person you have around you is to learn something. Yes. If you're not learning something, Preach. it's done. So when you have a relationship with something, with something, <laughs> I was going to say, so yeah, I have geez. a relationship with this plant. I have a relationship. Going? I just want to see what happens. <laughs> well, the last episode, I really did have a relationship with that plant. It wouldn't let go of me. Oh my God. You were literally banging it. <laughs> I was getting stuck You were cheating on hair. your boyfriend. You were banging literally. it. Literally. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, no, you, you keep people in your life to gain something from them. So if you have a relationship for six months, a year, whatever, and it doesn't work out, do you feel like you still need to have this person in your life as a, like, and I'm talking, talking on a regular basis. For me, that's friends. Talking at a party, I, I don't classify that as being friends with your ex. It's being on good terms. But do you feel the need to keep a relationship yeah. there to say, how are you? Uh, what's up? What's new? I got yeah. a new job. Like, See, that's not. where I draw the line. I think, look, when you break up with somebody, I don't think, like a lot of people, when they break up, it's easier to say, you know, maybe down the line we'll work out or maybe down the line we'll find our way back to mm-hmm. each other. It's easier to accept that at the beginning yes. when you're breaking up. Even than, though you know it's not true. Exactly. But it's easier to digest, to say that than to say, look, we're done. We're never going to speak forever. again. It's forever. It's mm-hmm. done. So that's what we say until we mm-hmm. we take the time apart and then we realize, wow, this person really wasn't for us. Mm-hmm. I feel like I've definitely had incidents with my uh, boyfriend now where it's like, you know, ex-girlfriends pop up back in the picture mm-hmm. and it's like, yeah, it's easy to get mad, but it's like, I also don't understand because I'm not coming from his point of view. Like, I don't know what they had, but at the same time, like, I think if you keep it to the bare minimum that, and you're still respecting me, it's fine. Yeah. But if she crosses the line where it's like, she has no respect for me, then I mm-hmm. expect you, who's my boyfriend, to have respect for me. Yeah. I just, I still don't see the point in like having to catch up and say, hi, how are you? Like, I think mm-hmm. that's, easily a way for somebody to try and rekindle and get back into your life but like yes i think eventually over time depending on the relationship you can become on a friendly matter with somebody you can become friends yes for sure i don't think it's gonna happen in the first year i think everything is too raw but i think four years down the line yes it could happen i also think that's what i'm saying it's more defining the terms of friends like yeah and also when you friends could be you see each other and you don't want that awkwardness yeah well for me it's more and and like i said i've never been in the situation where you know something another thing is when people you know if you date somebody that's in your immediate friend group you have no choice but to continue to be your friend and i understand that but if you're forcing a friendship that's outside of your friend group and outside of that, like, what are you choosing looking to gain? Yes. Here? Because exes, you you learned what you had to learn from that person. Let them yeah. go. So if you're still so concerned, so caring about this person, like, I care about all my exes because 
every time you've loved somebody or, or been close it to somebody, it was a part of you your care, life. You, you care gave about somebody, them. Yeah. Like if I would find out, but something, caring about somebody and feeling the need to have to like be a part of their be life, be a part of them. To me, it's this thing of like learning to not be able to let somebody go so that you can flourish. Like yeah. you know what I mean? Like I feel like letting go of somebody is the start to something new. And I heard this thing, and it always stuck with me. It's like. A lot of people tend to stay with like boyfriends or they get back with ex-boyfriends and they say, you know what, I'm only going to break up with this person when I feel like I've met my person because I don't want to be alone in this time. Mm -hmm. And I heard this thing and it was, you will never meet the person you're supposed to be with by being in a relationship because the universe sees it as you're with somebody and you're you're closed off. Yeah. So you're never going to meet your person by keeping your guard like closed yeah. in with that person so the only way is to go through that pain and to let go yeah and i was like wow it's true though because i mean we're both big universe people like yeah obviously everybody can believe in what they want but we i know we have the same mindset when it comes yeah. to like believe beliefs you know and i totally agree and i believe that the universe gives you what you deserve yes and and the universe, when you when they feel you're ready. So if you're hanging on to a relationship yeah. because you're too scared to be alone, the universe is going to say, no, you're, she doesn't you're need, clearly not. She doesn't need to meet someone. We're not going to yeah. bring anyone but amazing like into her life. You clearly haven't grown enough to say, I'm ready to be alone. Yes. The universe will always provide you when it is ready, when it is yes. the divine time. So if you're not showing that you're ready for it, if you're not showing that you're working for it, working towards that, why the fuck should... You know, yeah. it's with anything. Why would anybody give you something that you don't seem like you want? Yeah. So if you don't seem like you want that job bad enough, yeah. if you don't seem like you want that person bad enough, the universe will not give it to you till it feels like you're putting in the work to get there. Yeah. And sometimes, guys, the work is being single. The work is yeah. being okay with yourself, yeah. is letting go of people. Yeah, and the reason I even say that is because I've had so many friends who clinged on to boyfriends and they were like you know what i'm not i'm not gonna let go i'm not gonna let go like i know he's not my person and like i'll just wait for that guy to come i'm like sweetie mm -hmm. like have you heard of the universe like the universe <laughs> isn't bringing anything your way until you yeah. learn to let go yeah so and and you don't know what you want till you know who you are and you don't know who yes. you are till you get rid of the people that are not making you who you are yes if you're with somebody and you're not happy you are not who you are yeah do you know what i mean yeah you should be with somebody where you feel the most yourself yeah so if you're staying with somebody and you're not feeling fully yourself you're never gonna find the person for you yeah you're not even yourself you know holy shit i think we spilled a lot of facts today what the fuck this oh was my god oh, big dear, big dear. and then it came uh <laughs> if you don't know the universe wait, wait if you don't know now you know don't go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> yeah. just stick to the oh babe my solo and the camera went off just stick to the rivers and the lips that you used to. <laughs> Anyways, love you guys. Anyway, I'm wasted. And I'm, this one's I'm fucking wasted. amazing. It's amazing. Shout out to Mary Nelly Brothers. Go check them out. Shout out to Chelsea for the pink Shout hair. out. And Shout out to um, thanks Alessia. for watching. Shout and out to my ex-boyfriend who gave me a rose. <laughs> shout <laughs> out to your ex-boyfriend. Bitch, cheers me immediately. Well, shout out to your ex-boyfriend with the best nose ever. And I'm still jealous. I'm jealous too. Cherry, cheers. if you're listening. Cheers. 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 Cheers.